So powering higher ed with community, what does that mean? Um, is anybody here a developer? Did you come here to watch a developer talk? <coughs> Good, because you're not really going to get one, but you're going to learn kind of how we've been using WordPress um, as developers inside Washington State University to um, power things there, and then how I've realized that community ends up being more powerful than software um, at powering everything and making things go. So about two and a half years ago, I moved from Portland to Washington State University, big city to small city, um, with the objective of introducing WordPress to the, the community there. Um, and I kind of went into it, I talked to my future boss and, and talked to the people there and said, you know, I'm gonna drop the working with 10up agency thing and I'm gonna go work for higher ed, but the condition is that everything that we're gonna do is gonna be open source and we're gonna talk about the work we're doing and we're gonna try to kind of foster that culture inside WSU um, to hopefully one day provide a model for other universities to use or at least some kind of shared tips along the way. So some of it's worked, some of it's still in progress, um, but we're doing good. So the basics, community, um, all that means is a social unit of any size that shares common values, right? Uh, it's based in communis, Latin. I don't know Latin, but I looked it up on Wikipedia. Which means things held in common, right? So the WordPress community comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, so we have location-based communities like Portland here. So we're all in this room as part of the Portland WordPress community. We showed up for, for WordCamp. Um, in Portland itself, it's been a while since I went to a Portland meetup, but it sounds like you have several going on. So there's all these, you know, smaller communities inside Portland um, that kind of make up the Portland community as a whole. Today up in Seattle, there's uh, WordCamp Seattle. They had another one earlier in the year. Um, WordCamp Vancouver was back in August. So I kind of have this fondness of the Pacific Northwest WordPress community. We have some great WordCamps when we actually have them. Um, and then later in the year, in about a month or so, a whole bunch of people are gonna meet in Philadelphia for the first WordCamp US. Um, so we're gonna take people from all over the world and all these different communities and, and come together under one umbrella and you know, share some, some good talks together. And then at the same time, there are also communities based around ideas in WordPress. Um, so you have the core developers that spend a lot of time working on, on the core code and, and building WordPress itself. Uh, we have theme reviewers that review new themes that go into the theme directory for everybody to use. We have plugin reviewers and support people, um, people who plan events, people who put on the WordCamps. These are all individual communities that um, people have taken the time, their own personal time, to contribute uh, to this kind of thing that all lumps together in the end and builds the greater WordPress community. So that's WordPress. Universities, kind of similar. Um, also, oh, Wikipedia, Universitas Magistrorum Scholarium, which is a community of teachers and scholars. So a university at its core is a community of people doing different things and then kind of doing them for, for a unified purpose. Um, and then just like uh, WordPress, a university has all of the different communities inside of it. So there's usually a really strong alumni community, people that are proud to have graduated from, from a school. Um, and then a strong athletics community, because everybody likes football. Um, strong communities based around individual colleges, individual departments inside those colleges, departments like mine that aren't part of a college. We're kind of you know, one of those administrative groups that does things for a little bit of everybody. Um, and all of those combine to create this total university community um, that really powers the, the school forward as a whole. The thing is, when, especially with, with the colleges, when you get people that are super smart working on super specific things, uh, biology or math or physics or whatever, there's a tendency to kind of go off on your own and do your own thing. Um, and it can be hard to bring all those people together towards a common mission um, and then kind of harness that power and really make big changes rather than lots of small changes. Um, so communities without cross-pollination become silos. 
And these silos aren't, well, we have a lot of silos out in eastern Washington because we have a lot of grain, <laughs> but they're not necessarily like that, but I think of them more as underground silos. Um, so the more you stare at the work that you're doing and the more you, you don't necessarily share that knowledge with others or kind of take their knowledge, you dig your silo deeper and deeper. Um, sooner or later, it's kind of hard to see the light and it's harder to reach over and, you know, you're lost in your hole working on your thing. And you're excellent at what you do and you have your people, but it's kind of hard to make a, an impact on the greater world because you, know, you can't go back and forth. So Will Novosedlik has a great article. He says a couple long things that I'm just going to read for verbatim um, because they make a lot of sense in the context of communities and silos. So organizations that cannot breach the silo walls when necessary are ill-equipped to achieve breakthroughs of any kind. In a world where competition trumps collaboration, just managing to poke through those silo walls at all would be a breakthrough. He also says it's not the raw creativity or Herculean intellect of an inspired individual that solves problems. It's the interaction between that individual and others that leads to epiphany. So most scientific and artistic innovations or breakthroughs emerge from joint thinking, impassioned conversations, constructive conflict, and shared struggles among different people. And that's what the university should be, is a bunch of you know, different groups of people collaborating and sharing work and arguing and agreeing and, and kind of just moving, moving things forward as a whole. All right. So one of our jobs um, at the university is trying to figure out how to avoid these silos and specifically how to use things like WordPress and other open source technology to kind of bind people together around some common objectives uh, and keep progress moving forward. Skipped forward. Hi. So to do that, we need to find kind of this unique identifier, this bond that everybody has. So the, the kind of one thing that you want to work towards with everybody else. Um, and we want to provide this bond to the community. So we need to give them a way to use this bond. And we want to provide it to this community at large, but also continue to foster and encourage the growth of these smaller communities. So while we want you to be you know, WSU in everything that you do, we also realize that it's very important that, you know, Murrow College of Communication is a Murrow College of Educa or Communication. So with University Communications, we're in a pretty good place to do that um, by just providing the services that kind of power things. And then uh, using either our political capital or our nice friendliness to walk around and uh, explain to people why they should share their work and why they should work together. And we do this with a combination of brands. Uh, that's our unique identifier, where we have the, the cougar head or the WSU shield or you know, some kind of navigational element on a page where we say, you know, this is the unique brand that's going to exist everywhere. So if you're on a WSU site, you know, you know I'm, I'm in the WSU ecosystem. And then we're encouraging more and more the use of the web uh, to share your stories and to build quality websites and to use that brands to, to create websites that kind of interact seamlessly together. So that even though your individual communities are doing lots of great individual work, um, when people like alumni or students or reporters or anybody needs to come into the WSU ecosystem and figure out what's going on, it's kind of easy for them to navigate. It's easy for just the, the school as a whole to start sharing information. So we did this originally when we got there. Um, it took about a year before we started really introducing WordPress. At the same time, we built out a framework uh, that provided CSS and JavaScript and an HTML markup to say, you know, here's this unique navigational element that we're going to use throughout the school. Here's how it's going to interact, and here's some of the brand rules around it. Um, and by the way, we're building out this you know, big WordPress platform. It's going to take over as the content management system for the university. And it's all opt-in. You can you know, do it if you want to, but we really want you to. Um, so we had a few open forums, kind of town halls, where we gave everybody the opportunity to comment on what we were doing first. So we kind of got up there, explained what our goals were, um, explained that 
in difference from the past, we kind of wanted to be more open and take more suggestions and kind of get this idea going where in the future it wouldn't just be university communications maintaining all this stuff, but maybe one day, you know, developers are in other colleges and all contributing to the, the one core mission, kind of like uh, WordPress does. So those were good, we got a lot of good feedback. Um, and then we explained to everybody that we're gonna use open source software as much as possible. So previously we had a, a homegrown CMS. Um, before that I think we tried another homegrown CMS. So there's, uh, we made a sudden shift to always using open source. And I think almost our entire stack, most of our entire stack is open source. Nginx, MySQL, PHP, WordPress. Um, and then everything that we're doing, we're open sourcing as well. And then we're putting all of the work that we're doing inside open repositories. So two and a half years ago, Git, uh, we're, uh, Washington State University didn't have a GitHub account. Now we have somewhere around 150 or 160 repositories. Um, and that's probably 20 different plugins that we're using, um, maybe 50 different themes that we've created for different uh, websites. A lot of other projects, like we use Magento for some store solutions, and then others where they're just you know, HTML projects or a, a fun little JavaScript thing. Um, but the objective being that we share all of the work that we're doing in the open so that anybody in the community can comment at any time and raise an issue and has kind of that path forward um, to working with us. And so the thing that I've learned is that if you make your decisions out in the open, nobody's paying attention anyway. But the fact that you did makes the most impact. So it's, it's like the professors over in the college education don't really care like what decisions you're making with the brand when it comes down to it. But if anything ever come up, came up and you said, hey, this whole time we've been open and we've been working with these people and these people and these people, like this is a community thing that we're building here, then it's a lot, a lot easier to swallow. Especially for groups that are you know, used to having power over their very specific domains kind of. And then one of the biggest things we did, and this is a transfer from, from how it used to be, we used to charge a certain monthly fee for hosting with university communications. And it, it probably wasn't that much, like 100 bucks a year, 200 bucks a year or something. Um, but we came in and said, you know what, we're gonna build this WordPress platform and it's gonna be free. Um, so that means in the university system, there's a bunch of haves and there's a bunch of have-nots. So College of Eng Engineering or College of Business has a bunch of money and they can afford you know, their own servers or their own hosting fees. But then there's individual departments that don't have a ton of money from either alumni donations or, or who knows what. Um, so this kind of evens the playing field. Everybody can come in and, and play for free. And of course we said it's gonna be on WordPress. The biggest impact that WordPress has here is that everybody already knows how to use it or at least you can guess that 24% of them know how to use it. Um, and then the ones that don't, when they come in and they see it, the learning curve's not that bad. Um, and so it's pretty easy to get people in a place that can train other people um, on how to use WordPress. It's easy to recommend different resources um, to get them to come out to things like WordCamps, even though I'm the only one here. Um, there's actually a few people up in WordCamp Seattle today. So it's a, it's a good step to, to get people out there and hopefully convincing them one day to also become members of the WordPress community in their own way. But that's helped a lot. And then we've done a good job of giving them ownership over their sites. So it's not host a site with university communications and then we're gonna take care of everything for you and here are all the rules and you know, we'll update your homepage and da 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 da. It's here's the keys to your WordPress site. We've given you a basic brand. Now feel free to screw it up however you want to. And it's worked out really well because people are building some amazing things. Um, we just asked for control over 198 pixels that goes down the, the left side of the page. Um, and then outside of that, we say, you know, here's this HTML structure. You can put things wherever you want. And, and people do a good job. They, they share information back and forth with other colleges. We have a Slack channel that's just for, you know, the WSU web people. So we have, you know, people from engineering, people from, uh, our College of Arts and Science, like all communicating kind of on the side, how did you solve this problem or how did you do that problem? So it's, it's been fun to, to watch it grow. And then we started a program, Open Labs. Um, I forgot the name who I got this idea from, but she's a, somebody in a similar role on the East Coast, uh, Michelle somebody. 
Um, but every Friday we have open labs from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And we invite the entire community to come, you know, ask us questions. And so this is our first method of support to everybody. Um, and it gives them the opportunity to not have to wait for an email reply, not have to try to get us on a phone or something. Uh, they can come in and we can do a show and tell and show them the new features and kind of support any of the things that are coming up. It's been a super positive experience. Uh, we've been doing it probably almost two years now. Um, and it's a great regular community, so it's a lot of fun. So the, the lesson there is rather than trying to fit a solution into something and say like this is the solution that you're gonna use, try to provide a community and then let the community itself figure out where it's gonna take that. Um, there's a, I'll get it wrong, but Conway's Law says that an organization um, is bound, an organization creating some kind of system is bound to create it uh, kind of in the model that that organization itself communicates. So if you aren't careful, um, anything that you try to fit, any kind of solution that you're trying to fit into something is just going to look like your organizational structure and the power for change kind of lies in, in working outside of that and breaking outside of that. Um, yeah, those guidelines. So the community fills the blanks and then everybody wins. So some of our progress, um, we started this great thing, labs.wc.edu, and we told well, we're trying to tell all of the professors that have grad students and have some kind of lab. Um, you get free space, we're gonna help you as much as you can. We want you to share your research there. We want your grad students to share your research there. Um, we want to kind of foster this, this research community within the university. And then one day, the, the pie in the sky is kind of, um, I'm somebody that's writing about my wine research and then you know, last week somebody posted on their research sites about something to do with grapes. And I had no idea that they were even working on that specific research, but we were able to surface that through some kind of related content and say, hey, by the way, this person you'll never talk to in your university career is also working on this. Maybe you want to have coffee together or something. So we'll get there one day. It's close. Um, but hydrogen.wc specifically, uh, Jake Leachman, he's one of the top hydrogen people in the US, and he latched onto this like completely. So when I first got to university and sat down with him, he had a static site that a grad student built for him one time, like a long time ago, and it was, I mean, straight out of 1997 kind of, you know, cool background and weird things. I don't know if things were blinking, but it was, it was pretty close. And it was one of those things where he thought he knew how to edit it, there was this thing called FTP that if he did it right, then it would work, but if he didn't do it right, then he would go on to his next test for the day and just not worry about it. And he's young, he's like, probably my age, I think. So this isn't like, so the leap to this was just amazing for him. So we sat down and it was in open labs. He came in and we got him set up um, with a WordPress site and kind of planted these seeds and said, you know, we want you to have this. This means that you can change your content whenever you want. Go for it, please go for it. And then. Um, luckily, I'm friends with him and my boss is friends with him, so we also uh, spent some time after hours kind of explaining our ideals for the future. And it's worked. So I went there last night just to check in on things. Um, he's got 25 users on this site. So that's him and probably 24 grad students um, that he has in there. 72 different pages. Some of them are profiles for grad students. Some of them are profiles for the research they're doing, the grants they've gotten, the papers they've written and 154 posts. So he's got 154 posts over like the last year or so, so one every two days, that talks about the work that they're doing. He even as his grad students, like in their lab, there's like daily musings of the cryogenic engineer and talking about, you know, freezing things with crazy things that I don't understand. But it's a, it's a perfect example of how I want to build things at the university and get people sharing their work so that I can go home at night and open up Feedly and then just start reading all of the cool stuff that we're doing at WSU. So he's like sound perfect with it, which is great. And it's our, our model that we're kind of pushing other people and saying, you know, hey, this is working. And the first time that somebody comes in, sees a post of his and then offers him a big check for like $50,000 to do some kind of work, that's gonna change the world because then the entire university's community's ears will perk up and say, oh, like we can use this to get funding for our projects. And, that'll work. 
WSU.edu, back in March, we launched that for the first time um, on WordPress. Before that, it was kind of like this combination of custom CSS slash flash file slash HTML living on an IIS server somewhere that I think three people knew how to get into. <laughs> so that when somebody politically really needed, you know, one of the slideshow items to be changed to show something about their college, they could find the right way to get somebody to change it and it would work. Um, the structure held up well. It was, I mean, I think the basic HTML CSS structure was there for five or six years and it was solid and it worked and it was cross browser compliant and that was all fine. We launched on WordPress, a completely different page, a beautiful page. I think it's, it's one of the greater pages we've made. Um, and since March, since February actually, right before launch, we've had 386 revisions on the home page. So it sounds kind of crazy, like why would you change all of your content that much? But it, what it means is that people are in there, um, they're dragging, you know, maybe trying column switches using our page builder to say this column should be over here, uh, altering the number of news items that are appearing, changing the top stories, uh, just making these small little tweaks that they're able to make on the fly and, and kind of test things as they go rather than trying to figure out who the three people are that might be able to help them that day um, and change it. So we've had a lot of great feedback on this and we've had a lot of good fun um, working with it. And then the platform as a whole now, we officially launched a year and a few months ago. I was working on it for about a year before that. Um, but now, using WordPress multi-site, one single installation of WordPress, we have 54 networks, 953 sites, and almost 1,800 users. Um, and the last 30 days, we finally hit 2 million page views. Um, so it's this, this big, beefy platform that's actually starting to power the majority of the university. Uh, we have the College of Education, the College of Engineering, College of Business, um, College of Arts and Sciences. We have too many colleges for me to remember, but <laughs> departments and colleges all throughout the university are now using this as their way to, you know, to publish things, which is great. And I think we've finally gotten to that, that point where people inside the university are, like, continue to be excited about this and are happy that WordPress is there. Um, it's often a breath of fresh air when somebody new comes in and realizes we're using WordPress. And then you can kind of see like, oh, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought it was. So that's been great. Um, so yeah, community's worked out for us. I think what I'm, I want to continue trying to do is, is just stressing the collaboration between colleges. Um, we're hiring another WordPress developer. Talk to me if you're interested. Um, and I'm hoping things like that will... Uh, kind of get people even more inspired. So my grand plan is to kind of say every college has some kind of WordPress developer or something so that we can all communicate towards these things that then work for everybody else. Um, and then the grander plan, of course, is to take this kind of structure and go to different universities that haven't thought about WordPress and say, you know, this is how we did it, you guys should do it too. And then maybe we can all kind of come together and, and work on that. So that's powering higher ed through community. Give it up for Jeremy Feld. Powering higher ed. And we probably have time for questions. Uh, I've got time for a couple questions. Okay. Have you ported the library? Sorry, what was that again? I'm curious if you tried to port the library. A little bit. So our library system is pretty cool. Um, and we actually have a new open access librarian that started just a, a little bit ago. So we've been talking to her because um, we also have this idea of trying to feed some of the open access publications into a central repository with the library and then pulling those out into things like the website and kind of trying to surface that material more. So we've talked to them um, and we have regular kind of it would be fun with conversations. Uh, we haven't gotten too deep into what what it would really look like, though. But one day. Yeah. More question? Hold on. Um, I'm curious about, it, you said that you kind of hand over the site and say, go, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, are you letting them use anything they want, any plugin they want? What do you do with security? Talk to me about that. No. <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't mention that at all. but. 
I'm kind of mean. This is probably why it's good if we have another WordPress developer. Because um, I'll say no to most plugin requests. Um, and we build, we have a parent theme that we built that um, everybody can use, and then you can build child themes off of that. But all of the code, one of the big things about providing a central system for the university is making sure that it's secure and making sure that it's up all the time. So we don't give everybody the ability to go to the plugin repository and say, you know, I want to add this new way of sharing content on Twitter. Um, that has to work in more of a, they can request any plugin that you want and then kind of go through a code review process and try to get things in there. Um, so similar to WordPress.com in a way where there's a, a suite of plugins available and, and new features, but you can't necessarily go out and install anything you want because that will, sorry, plugin developers, break your site. <laughs> um, just in follow-up, do you get pushback on that? Are people pretty cool? Sometimes about it? I've what gotten really good at explaining it, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then it it usually works. I think. There's probably been one or two people that have decided to go host their own because we said no, but it's not that big of a deal. It's like, um, I think there's probably some frustration uh, because I'll say, yep, we'll code review it and then we'll have to figure it out, or no, I code reviewed it and it's horrible, but we can build it out ourselves. You just gotta wait. And that's the hard part is the, you know, wait for your WordPress developer to, to build it out. Um, but the open labs um, help a lot with that because we can cover the status of current projects and say, it's like, you know what, like, we're going to build this feature, but it's going to be next year. So, just, you know, it's okay. Hold on. And um, usually as long as you're communicating all of that in the open, then everybody's pretty happy. Everybody at the university is kind of used to that slower pace for things to get done. It's <laughs> just so weird. <laughs> Think I have time for one more? Uh, wait back here. Sorry. <laughs> process. Can you say something real briefly about that? Mm -hmm. So, well, the code review process is me right now. <laughs> um, so my process, and, and I'll be a little bit more lenient sometimes just because, um, but the first thing that I'll do if somebody says, hey, I want to install this plugin off the repo, I'll go straight to the plugins homepage, look at their trunk uh, SVN repo, and just start doing a quick glance at the code. And unfortunately, there are quite a few plugins in the plugin repository that probably do a great job for single sites, but if it only takes a few seconds of reading through to say, you know, this is going to be a lot more trouble than it's worth um, to even get started and to dive in deeper. Uh, one of the other things I look for is, and it's kind of a requirement, is that there is some method of upstream contribution available. Um, so if your plugin's hosted on GitHub, and it's pretty obvious that there's a way on there for me to contribute code, then that's going to be a lot easier um, because then I'll help fix the plugin and, and make it so that we can use it. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you can connect with Jeremy there at, uh, at Jeremy Felt. And he'll be around the rest of the day, I'm sure, for questions.